Simpson's Paradox How Data Can Fool You Data, data, data. We are increasingly becoming a society obsessed with data. Important decision-making meetings will often parrot the phrase, well, what does the data say? Being data-informed is all well and good, but using it at face value to drive decision-making can be rather dangerous. In this video, we will discuss one of the ways data can trick you into making the wrong decision. In 1973, UC Berkeley was sued for sex discrimination. It turned out, out of all the female students who applied, only 35% of them were admitted, while out of all the male students who applied, 44% of them were admitted. The data raised a lot of eyebrows and the witch hunt was on. UC Berkeley set out to find the main culprits of this gender discrimination. To do this, they broke open the data to see which departments were mainly responsible for this gender bias. And here is what they found. Now this is where the data gets funny. After breaking open the data, we see a different story. Out of the six departments, Four of the departments accepted more women than men. There definitely was a gender bias, but it was in favor for women, not against. But that begs the question, why did the aggregated data tell a different story? This is a classic case of Simpson's paradox. When grouped up data tells the opposite story of the ungrouped data. This usually happens because of a confounding factor that is hidden from sight within the data. So what's this hidden factor that's causing all this mischief? Take a look at the first row and the last row of the table. You'll notice that Department A has a pretty high acceptance rate, especially for women, sitting at 82%. However, out of the 4,000 plus women, only 108 of them applied to this department. That's only 2% of all women who applied across departments. On the other hand, 825 of the men applied to this department. That's 10% of all male applicants. You may have already spotted the mischief, but let's go on. Take a look at the last row. You'll notice that Department F has an extremely low acceptance rate, especially in contrast to Department A that has a high acceptance rate. And this is where it goes all wrong. Compared to the men, a much larger portion of the women apply to Department F, which has a really low acceptance rate. Around 4% of all men applied here, while 8% of all the women applied here. So in truth, Women weren't really being discriminated against. It just so happened that a large proportion of them were applying to a low acceptance rate department, while a large proportion of the men were applying to a high acceptance rate department. That skewed the overall results and made it seem that women were being rejected across all departments. This sort of data mischief, the Simpsons paradox, can happen everywhere even in businesses who use data to make important decisions. Here's a business case example. A CEO and his team were deliberating whether to use a one-click advertisement campaign or a two-click advertisement campaign. That's when the marketing manager, who happened to support the two-click campaign, showed him some data. Here's what it looked like. As you can see, Single click had more users allocated to it and thus more revenue, but the RPM is much higher for the double click. When you look at the data, the decision is obvious. Double click is generating more money per user, so they should go with double click, correct? Turns out, picking the double click campaign would have been a costly mistake. Let's break open the data again into its subgroups of international users and local users. Now, this is what the data will look like. Suddenly, and once again, the data tells a different story. 
single click is outperforming double click in both subgroups, local and international. How is this possible? Simpson's paradox at play again. The grouped up data has a hidden factor that tells the opposite story of the ungrouped data. In this case, the hidden factor was that only 33% of international users were shown the double click page, while 58% of the local users were shown the double click page. And in general, local users, as you can see in the data, had a much higher RPM than international users. The combination of the higher proportion and the higher RPM skewed the overall data. The reality was that single click was generating more revenue per user than double click. Phew, this was a tough example. Take a minute to pause the video and analyze the data if you need to. Simpson's paradox can be tricky. The key is to look out for any hidden variables that may be influencing your data. The lesson here is don't rely on your data too much. If something smells fishy, look into it. Do not trust your data blindly. If you'd like to learn more about analytics and statistics, we recommend reading Naked Statistics by Charles Whelan, Web Analytics by Avinash Kaushik, and Standard Deviations by Gary Smith. Hey guys, this animation was brought to you by Skip MBA. If you're looking for additional resources or book recommendations on business and entrepreneurship, check out our reading list on skipmba.com. And if you want to keep updated on all our future content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Ciao!